Most modern PCs have one major issue. Now likely you yourself have a low to mid-range system. You probably have the latest Intel or AMD CPU, likely DDR4 or DDR5 RAM, probably 16 to 64 gigabyte, and likely also some M.2 NVMe storage. Most modern systems have one major flaw, which is insufficient disk space. You can fix that error. Oh, look at that, celebrating away. It's absolutely a breeze here, I'll show you how. But you are gonna need one of these, a 5.25 inch bay. That looks like a compact disk. Is that an Apple? Ah, oh, it is an Apple device, fascinating. Now subscribe for future content. Where are we gonna fit this particular adapter? It's gonna go into my editing machine, the HP Z840 workstation. And that there is a related all master adapter, check a related video. But for now, we're gonna fit this adapter, which allows us to fit four SSDs in a hot swap configuration. Check out a future video where we take the Z440 and give it a little bit of nasty cache. Uh, stay tuned for that. But for now, there is our two adapters side by side. Take note, the current adapter is about half the price of a related IC dock MB324SP-B. Okay, so for our session today, we're going to compare these two adapters briefly, but then we're going to launch in. I'm going to take the SSDs that are mounted in the left adapter and place them into the right adapter. Check out the video outline where we're going to go through unboxing, fitment of these SSDs, and uh, very, very quickly getting this up and running in a RAID 1 mirror. But for now, check out the components in the box. We have our adapter, instruction manual, quite a few SATA cables, and even some mounting hardware. These hot swap trays are relatively straightforward, and they do give us the ability to very quickly switch our SSDs should we seek to do so. Fitment feels relatively good, although refitment's a little delicate. I would worry about that breaking. And these red tabs, oh, I don't know. They do feel a little bit flimsy. Hopefully they never break on me, but if they do, you'll be sure to hear about it. But for now, that's looking pretty decent for uh, the money. Good value proposition. Now for the next step, we do need to get our SSDs. So where are the SSDs? Well, these were in the old master MR8802, a related 5.25 inch adapter. It's about half the price yet again. But it does not have hot swap. Now this one's really nice because we can very easily switch our SSDs between machines, which you may never have to do, but every once in a while when you do require this feature, it's actually really nice to be able to do hot swap. So there it is. Now not quite as good as it could be because we do have to mount these with screws where a very nice clip-in design. So that's a slight negative, but it's okay. We can manage. It's still going to work relatively well. Now next step, second SSD. I'm going to fit two SSDs. These are the Samsung 870 EVOs, very capable SSD, four terabyte in size, which is gonna allow me to create a RAID 1 mirror so I can store critical data on these while attaining relatively good speed. So these should be good for around 540, 540 megabytes per second read and around 470 megabytes per second write. There it is, very handy little drives and gotta keep an eye on these little clips. Let's see what it's like to install the second drive. Okay, it feels much better on the second attempt here. We'll give it a light little nudge. I think it's a born first mounted on the SATA connector at the back. Hard to show you that. Camera, where art thou pointing? It's okay, we can kind of see it in this view here. We do have four SATA cables we need to connect. We've got our built-in fan, and obviously we need a Molex power connector. Now, fitment is a breeze. You just have to remove your existing 5.25 inch bay. Often a DVD writer. If your old machine's really old, like that Apple from earlier, well, maybe a CD writer. That's uh, sl slightly less common these days. But very important, we do need to connect four SATA 3.0 cables. Very important, don't use 2.0 cables. You will get half the speed of what you would desire from these SSDs. And we do need one Molex connector. This particular adapter would probably draw up to about 60 watt, pending the end configuration particularly if we're running something like 2.5 inch hard drives instead of SSDs, which you could do as well. And you may require some splitters in order to get the power connected, but generally these are pretty straightforward to connect and you should have somewhere in your machine the connectors required. Now you could go with Velcro or cable tie in order to tie these down, but not too bad overall. Now for setup in Windows 10. I'm gonna go for a software-based RAID 1 mirror 
which may not be quite as good as the hardware base RAID, but this does give me, again, the ability to take this hot swap drive, plug it into another Windows machine, and very easily import that particular storage library, which is, from my perspective, fantastic for video editing. Uh, you may find some benefit if you've got more than one machine for different purposes. Or even if you just want to walk around a few SSDs in your back pocket, why not? Okay, and there's our labeling of our drive. I'm going to go with RAID 1 SSD. You could perform a quick format if these had been occupied previously. If they're brand new, no need. And we're ready to go. We'll hit finish. Now, we will be prompted here for warning just in case uh, we make an error. So thank goodness for that. But if you're happy to go ahead, we'll click yes. Now, the formatting process here will take a long time. Be warned on that one. It could take quite a long time before that drive is created. Now while we wait, I'll show you some speed tests on related drives. This is the Samsung 980 1TB using DaVinci Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So pretty decent speeds. So we're seeing somewhere around 1700 megabytes per second write and somewhere around 2300 megabytes per second read. Pairing that to another system, this is for the Z440 NUS build, 10 gigabit ethernet connection to the HP Z840 and pretty slow there. We're getting about 50 megabytes per second write, so not ideal, but we're getting up to 650 megabytes per second read, which is phenomenal through that 10 gigabit connection. Now, next one here, this is the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, which is currently my operating system. And that does mean it's being loaded in the background. It may not perform as well as you would expect, but we're seeing somewhere around 1300 for write and around 2500 for read. That's not too bad. Now for the SSDs of interest. The formatting is all finished. We can check out the speeds. So right now seeing around 470 megabytes per second write and around 520 megabytes per second read. And looking at the real world file transfer, we're also getting some half decent speeds. But take note, it's still not as fast as I would want for mixed file transfers. That speed is really variable depending on what we end up transferring. So definitely keep an eye on that. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. That was the very quick storage upgrade for your pc hopefully you enjoyed it stay tuned for future content i'll see you on the next video